All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Global Reality. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is the Thursday, January 19th, 2017 edition of the broadcast. I am here with you. I don't know how long I can be here with you, but I'll try to give it my best. So I'm going to be going real fast. I'm not going to be wasting a lot of time. Uh, I'm not going to be BSing a lot. I'm just going to be doing straight show and uh, give you all the information that I need to give you in uh, the shortest amount of time possible because um, I, I, I'm still dealing with this uh, tooth issue thing, man. I, I, um, I'm at the end of my rope, honestly. I don't know what else to do, and I'm in massive pain, and I've, um, I just there's just no end in sight. There's no solution. I don't know what to do. Um, and it's, you know, it's affecting my work and my ability to work and my ability to do shows and all this stuff and the ability to do anything. And I'm just miserable and I'm in pain. And this is, um, you know, the first day I've had less pain. I I've somewhat got it more diagnosed uh, and believe me, I appreciate everybody's suggestions out there, but at this point I, I just, I need money to get my teeth fixed and that's it. Uh, or past the point of home remedies and fixes and, and all this stuff. Um, uh, I basically have got, you know, a tooth that's separating from the top of a tooth or something. I don't know. And, uh, luckily, you know, I haven't still, I haven't had, had any infection, any swelling, any fever, anything. It is, it's very odd. Everybody's looked at it. and said, it's odd. Um, but, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, nonstop pain. I have got it reduced some. Part of the problem is dry mouth because of that, I guess, the two separating from another part of it or something. Basically, it's like three of my back teeth need to be repaired um, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And they're just at a stage where there's, you know, there's nothing else I can do except really get it. And it's, that's the problem. Everybody's saying, oh, we'll just go get it pulled. Well, I don't want to be without a tooth, number one. So I already have one on the other side that broke off. And, you know, it's not just one. It's a, it's like three in a row on the on the left-hand side of my mouth that are all, you know, it's like three. I don't know if those are molars or I don't know what they are. Um, but, um, you know, there's really, there's just, there's no solution other than to get them fixed. And, you know, without, <laughs> with no money to be able to do that, I'm just, uh, stuck in a constant loop of of uh non-stop pain i mean there's there's really nothing else i can do and since i don't drink alcohol and i don't take uh fucking pills prescription pills i don't take any of that shit and this fucking over-the-counter bullshit only goes so far you can imagine and don't say weed weed does not help fucking tooth pain um that's not it's not a fucking option not there's really other than just little bouts and spurts of non-pain it's just making me fucking miserable, man. I'm tired of it. I'm ready. Cause last time I was in this much pain was when I had my wisdom teeth. Well, my wisdom teeth were going bad. I had them taken out. That was back in 2000. Um, and strangely enough, I was doing a job at that time. I was doing like, uh, I was a uh, customer support, uh, support rep for a software company. So I was, you know, talking and having to talk all day. Then, and try to work, and, and so you can imagine when you're, you know, this is not the first time that my livelihood has been affected by dental problems, but for right now, for this moment, hallelujah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm pain-free for the moment. I can feel it kind of dull back there, so, um, but it is good to be, be here with you. I've wanted to be here with you more, but I, I've tried about four or five times to do shows, and it's like it's, I'll start talking, and I'll start talking for a couple of minutes. And then the pain just takes over. And I, I think I found out why that is, is. It has to do with this dry mouth thing because I'm opening my mouth. It's exposing it to air. Bing, bada, boom. That's where, and then, boom, that's why I'm getting the pain. So you can imagine when I'm told, we'll just try not to talk a lot, which is fine because I don't normally talk a lot when I'm not on air anyway, but. You can imagine when somebody, when you do a radio show and somebody tells you, well, if you don't want to hurt, don't talk. And then I go, well, you know, that's my job. That's what I do. <laughs> how am I supposed to, you know, I, how am I supposed to even live and survive if I can't talk when my job is to talk? You know, so I, 
uh, not a good. This has just not been a good start for me in 2017. I, I, I really want this year to be, and hope this year is better. But you know, uh, th- what this, what's going on with this right now with my my teeth and my mouth? It's you know, it's basically not. It's not allowing me to do anything. You know, I can't work, can't focus, can't concentrate. It just it fucking sucks. Um, so, you know, I, 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 you don't want to hear me bitch and piss and moan. I'm sorry, just fucking turn it off. But I, I have to get up here and vent. You know, this is my only fucking outlet. You don't like it? Go listen to somebody else's show. But I'm sorry, I've got to fucking vent and 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 you know, talk about this because it sucks, man. It really fucking sucks. So there's that, and you know, it's not like there's a lot of shit to talk about anyway. I, I shouldn't have even got. See, I, I'm I'm pissy. I'm in a fucking bad mood. I don't feel good. I should have even got up here and fucking done a show. I'm not trying to take it out on you. Please don't take it that way. Don't take it personally. I'm just, I'm, I'm fucking not, I'm just not well, man. I'm just not fucking well. And here's the thing. I'm not somebody that gets sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never get colds. I never get fever. I don't, I never get, like, if you see me get sick, I get sick like once every four or five years, maybe at the most. So for me to have some kind of ailment or something that is keeping me from being able to do my thing you got to understand that it's, it, there's a bit of it that's starting to drive me insane considering this has been going on. Now, that we're, look, we're, we're at the 19th day of fucking June, folks. This started January 1st. I'm going on my 19th day of fucking unabated pain here. So, I, again, I apologize if I sound pissed off and fucking I'm not mad at you. I'm not just, I'm, 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 you know, I have to voice my anger and get it out somehow so it doesn't fucking stay in there. You know what I mean? I've got to uh, get it out. But man, it fucking sucks. Um, so, you know, I, again, I really don't know what, at this point. I don't know what to do. I have no options, so I'm just gonna have to fucking uh, deal with it and do the best I can, I guess. Um, but with that said, you know, we we not having shows and everything. I mean, you you can probably guess that's uh, caused us not to be able to get any support this month, any contributions, any donations. If you want to help us out, you want to help help out the cause we've got a lot of great rocks gems and minerals and crystals on sale right now at let there be rocks we put a ton of new specimens and stuff up there we'll be putting more stuff up go to our let there be rocks facebook page you can find links to it on the global reality facebook page you can find links to it i think on my website and you can go to to facebook and just type let there be rocks and peruse what we have there go and make a purchase uh all you do is if you see something like pm me on on there or leave a comment, and then I'll PM you. Just PM me and, and uh, send me a personal message on Let There Be Rocks when you see some stuff that you want. Pick out the things you want, and uh, I'll uh, we'll make arrangements there in the PM for payment and all that stuff and shipping. But anyway, that would be the you know that would be the, if you want to donate the old traditional way. Hey, that's fine too. Um, you can do that, but I would you know much rather you. Go and get some crystals, rocks, gems, and stuff for us. We've got so much great stuff up there. So much rare gems and minerals. We've got jewelry, rings, pendants, and tons of rare specimens. Stuff you're guaranteed. Folks, we have stuff that you guarantee are not going to find anywhere else. I've gone to gem and mineral shows, man, and, and I'm always disappointed when I go to gem and mineral shows. I'm not kidding you. I've gone to gem and mineral shows with friends, and, I'm like, and, and literally my friends have gone, man, you have better stuff at your house. <laughs> I'm just going to go shop at your house from now on. I have friends and stuff. Yeah, hey, can I come over and shop? Yeah, you go, okay. You know. So we we really have a lot of rare stuff. Stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Stuff nobody else has. And we got some great deals up there. And uh, so go and and that that help that would help out supremely. It would help. I'm trying really to sell uh, as many crystals and 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 rocks and stuff right now as I can. Uh, specimens. We have so many great, very rare, some of the most sought after uh, specimens in the gym and mineral world we have right now. Uh, high quality tourmalines, AAA quality tourmalines. We've got uh, Amazonite Smoky Quartz combos from Colorado, Lake George, Colorado, uh, high altitude mining crystals. So those are some of the most highly sought after, if not the most highly sought after, mineral specimens in the mineral world right now. We've got everything from small ones on up to the, probably the, one of the biggest ones you've ever seen. We've got huge. Small specimens, and we got bigger specimens as well. If you don't see something you're looking for, and there's a specific type of mineral or crystal that you want, send me a PM. Let me know how much you want to spend, and uh, I will 
I can get, I mean, I can get anything there is really. So that's, uh, there you go. Update on the Blu-rays and DVDs for the Spellcasters. Want to give you an update on that as well. I got contacted by our, uh, I've been at the Mercy folks for the last three months now. Um, the reason it's taken so much longer, it has nothing to do with me. I want to put that out there. This has been not me. This delay in the DVDs and Blu-rays has not been me. This has been me waiting on the artwork. I've never had this big of a problem. I've gone through four different artists, I guess, who either had just or not even either haven't taken it seriously or are just no good. Um, we, we finally, our guy that did um, the Lost Secrets one cover contacted me a while ago, and he's been working on it. But then he had to move. And he was without internet for I don't know how long, so uh, the waiting game fucking continues. Believe me, I'm as pissed off as anybody else is because I'm ready to have the shit done and, and get start getting these out and everything. But the good news is it's going to be awesome. It's going to be an amazing looking package. And uh, as soon he, supposedly he's supposed to have the artwork done this week. And um, as soon as he has the artwork done, then we'll send him off to manufacturing. It'll be two or three weeks uh, after that for them to be manufactured and sent back. And then they'll start going out. So we're looking at probably from this point, we're probably looking at middle of February is probably when you'll start seeing them show up in the mailbox. Maybe sooner. It just, I mean, it just depends. But I'm, I'm saying right now, conservative estimates, probably middle of, of uh, February on DVDs and Blu-rays for Spellcaster Volume 1. Now, you can still get downloads at our download shop. So It still amazes me how many people have s- trouble finding our download shop. I get emails, comments, messages all the time. And sometimes I really seriously, I think they're a joke. People are like, where is that? Right in the middle of the, of, of the website, theglobalreality.com. It says, the Global Reality Shop. It's in the middle of the page. It says, purchase all of Josh Reeves' available documentaries, including lost, the latest volume, The Lost Years of Ancient America, along with all the audiobooks. One click of a mouse is all it takes. You click that, boom. You are in the download shop where you can download all my documentary films going back to my first documentary film, which came out in 2007, 9-11, New World Rising. Uh, I've released six full-length films in 10 years. We're working on two more films, hopefully that will be released this year, Spellcaster Volume 2 and, uh, well, we actually got three films in the works this year. Wow, I forgot about that. Uh, basically, it's one of those roll the dice things. Spellcaster Volume 2 most certainly will be coming out this year. As far as the other two, I don't know yet. I don't know where, whether the other film will be coming out later in the year. By the end of the year, will either be Anunnaki, the movie, or Lost Secrets of Ancient America, Volume 3, depending on if we get funding. Or it might not be either one of those if we don't get the funding. So that's the bottom line of all this. You know, I, I got an email from somebody the other day saying, oh, you, why don't you make a, 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 a video? You need to make a video series for people that don't like to research. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. I mean, I appreciate the honesty, though. So basically, make make a video for us lazy motherfuckers. Well, if you really look at it, isn't that kind of what I already do? <laughs> isn't that kind of what I, I it, it is? Make something for uh, beginners and stuff. Well, first off, and I have to do this so often because you know people new people come in. Uh, my, this is not the kiddie pool. There are a zillion motherfuckers out there and have been for years that can give you the beginning, basic beginner courses. That's not me, and that's not what this is. Okay, I, I, this is the deep end of the fucking rabbit hole where you come when you've already gone through all the other low-level stuff. I'm not interested in giving beginner basic courses. I'm not a fucking school teacher, number one. Okay, let's get that out of the way. I'm not interested in giving basic 101 conspiracy courses to noobs. All right? I'm now, I, now, if you want to pay me or you want to pay for something like that to be done and you want to put up the thousands of dollars of a budget that it would take to do it, hey, I'll do it. But I, all the time I get people, hey, make a movie, make a video about this, make a, make a film about this. Great. You want to give me the money to make it? Well, I don't have money for that. Well, then why don't you make it? Well, I, I don't know how, and I don't have the money. And I don't, Okay, so you don't have the resource to do this, but you think magically that I do? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Again, I don't know how to stress this to people. You know, we there is not a never-ending river of money for people who are doing this kind of work. 
This is the absolute worst career decision you could make if you are in this to make money. I barely fucking survive, folks. I'm not joking with you. I barely survive week to week, month to month. And this two thing this month has hurt me bad. You know, because when I'm not able to do shows, I'm not able to tell people to support our work, we don't get anything in to keep going. So, I, I you know, I, I understand, I appreciate where you come from, guy that emailed me, um, you know, but the, the bottom line of it is, man, you know, sometimes stuff like that, you want to do it, you got to take it by the reins, and you got to do it. I can't do everything, and I've already got my, I can barely even get my own work and stuff that I've got to do done. You know, so I'm. I, this is not the kiddie pool. I'm not going to sit up here and I'm not going to give 101 basic fucking conspiracy courses to noobs. I mean, that is the fucking last, the last goddamn thing that I ever want to do. Because number one, I don't like retreading shit. It drives me crazy already when I have to go back and rehash shit. It's why it's why doing interviews and stuff drives me crazy. And I don't accept every interview request I get, man. People, I get fucking tons, and I, I'm very selective about it. And uh, you know. That's the thing, because I just don't like repeating the same shit over and over and over again. But it's necessary to a certain extent. So anyway, go check out our download shop. We've got so much stuff in there, and I, and I know, judging by all the thousands of listeners and stuff that we have out there, I know for a fact, with all the thousands of listeners, many of you have not even seen or bought copies of my films or my audiobooks. So what are you waiting on? We got stuff in there. I know you haven't heard because we got stuff in there in the download shop that's not available on YouTube. So that I know for a fact there's tons of you that haven't heard some of the stuff in there. We've got uh, uh, Josh Reeves reads The Gods of Eden by William Bramley with a bonus interview with William Bramley that I conducted. We've got uh, There Were Gods Upon the Earth. Zachariah Sitchin. People were asking me for more Sitchin readings. Hey, there's there it is right there. It's in the it's in the uh, it's in the download shop. Manly P. Hall three pack audiobooks. Reality of Illusion the complete series. Secret Messages one and two the complete film series. The Global Reality the first seven years. Fifty hour seventeen MP three collection co compiling stuff from the show from two thousand seven to two thousand fourteen. Our history of Atlantis. Secret Society documentation and annals on Atlantis, Atlantis and the Giants, Secret Right Volume 1 and Volume 2, Josh Reeves Reads the Lost Book of Enki, Emerald Tablets of Taunt, Lost Secrets of Ancient America Volume 1 and Volume 2, 9-11 New World Rising. All of it's in there, folks. Go to the download shop and get yourself some downloads and also go to our Global Reality Facebook page to check out there, Let There Be Rocks and, uh, and just any way you can. We're in that, uh, we're just in a major situation here because, uh, again, this, this fucking two stuff has immobilized me and, and really hurt my, and I uh, hurt my productivity, but I do appreciate all the uh, suggestions and everything out there and the kind words and everybody well wishes. This really helped uh, as far as just, you know, as, as I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, it's been affecting my, it's just, it's been, it's been affecting everything, my mental fucking state, everything. Uh, that's what this, that's what tooth pain does, man. It makes you fucking nuts after a while. Like literally like mentally ill. If you don't get the shit fixed and <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going, I'm, well, I'm probably, I, I mean, that's debatable. I probably, probably already are a little, a little mentally ill, aren't I? Aren't we all? Uh, you know, I, I think, I think making it, I think every year that you make it another pass around the sun, you know, I think everybody's a little crazy in some ways. It's just to, to what degree, you know, that's what it is. That's really what it's all about. Isn't it? Cause everybody's really crazy, especially women. Yeah. Oh God, you y'all, we all are fucking nuts. Every last one of you. And y'all say the same thing about us and it's, it's true. So, you know, fair game, but, uh, woohoo women. I tell you what, I'm done with women. I'm done. I, I'm not fucking. I'm, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to be single for life. Fuck it. Women don't cause anything but problems for me. Every time, every goddamn last one of them has, has fucked me up in some way, except my grandmother. God rest her soul. She was the best one I ever knew in my life. Man, they don't make them like her anymore. The only woman, the only woman I ever encountered in my life didn't fuck me up emotionally in some way. 
Oh, Lordy. I hope everybody's doing good out there. I hope your 2017 has started off good. We haven't had uh, a lot of uh, celebrity deaths so far, and then we had one today. And uh, I really like I really liked him. One of my favorite movies of all time, Miguel Ferrer. Uh, interesting character, Miguel Ferrer. A lot of people don't, probably don't you know know this from his because he doesn't have a very recognizable last name. But his mother, uh, Miguel Fair, he, he might know he was the guy in RoboCop. Uh, he was the guy that created RoboCop. And then Red from uh, uh, that 70s show, it didn't fucking blew him up with a grenade. Remember, it's one of my favorite all-time movies, RoboCop the first. It was when I was a kid, and just, you know, it was filmed in my town, too. So, And I've been to all the locations. You know, I know where all the spots, where it was filmed at. and uh, But Miguel Fair died of cancer today he, he's been in other stuff too but you know for me he'll always robocop was always the standout role for me for him but his mother was uh rosemary clooney and rosemary clooney was in the room um not very far from rfk robert f kennedy when he was assassinated and she is of course the aunt of mr cia george clooney uh, making Miguel Ferrer the first cousin of George Clooney. So, uh, rest in peace to him. Love RoboCop. That's that's one of the. Uh, I, I have this thing. I, I've uh, I'm just obsessed. You know, I, I grew up in Dallas. It's my town. It's my place. I know this place. So you know, I love movies that have been filmed here. I'm really obsessive about it. I always have for for a long time. It's not anything new. It's been away for a long time. I'm just obsessive about movies that uh, you know have been filmed in Dallas. So I'll go out and you know go to the locations and stuff like that. It's been some great ones filmed here too. Some of my actually some of my favorite movies ever you know have been filmed here from RoboCop, uh, Wes Anderson's first movie Bottle Rocket with the uh, Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson that was filmed here. Lots of lots of Dallas landmarks in that in that movie. Uh, an older movie. Uh, if you never, have you ever seen Logan's Run? Logan's Run's a fucking great movie. That was all filmed here too. Uh, it was filmed in Dallas and Fort Worth. It was filmed all around the area. Uh, another uh, there was uh, Ron Howard. Ron Howard's first movie. Ron Howard's first directorial debut uh, when he was making movies for uh, uh, Roger Corman, who did you know a lot of the horror films and stuff. He made this film back in the late 70s. It was like made for TV. It was called Cotton Candy. And uh, it's it's like about this like high school, you know, guys, they start this band and, you know, the Battle of the Band stuff. Anyway, it's filmed all around Dallas and, and this film's impossible to find. I actually had to finally find pieces of it because you could never find the whole thing. I found pieces of it and pieced it together and edited my own version of it together because it's it was never even it was never even put forget DVD and Blu-ray this fucking thing was never even put on VHS and I've got a I've got an interesting story about this too because uh, I thought of that thought about this the other day but uh, I mean if you watch it I mean it, it you know it's it's very typical movie of the time kind of an after school special type thing but you know for for me and for people who grew up in in, in Dallas and stuff I mean it's almost like a time capsule you know because it looks how everything looked like when I was a little bitty kid in that movie and uh it's you know it's it's terrible I mean it's I like it though it's it's cheesy in this really cool kind of way but for years man even before the internet I searched for this movie for years could never find it and then later when the internet came about you know no VHS the only thing that exists are VHS recordings that people have made from like late night TV showings when it would show on late night TV back in the day. But now it's not even, there are no copies of it around. About 10 years or so ago, somewhere, I think it was in the, you know, the, remember the old Usenet news groups and stuff you could find. You know, I mean, I don't know if those are still around. They might be, but I used to go and you do the news groups thing all the time and you find, all kinds of dark, crazy information. Well, I found in there, I, I in somewhere in the in the in the dark web somewhere about ten years or so ago, 
I found uh, Ron Howard's actual email address at Imagine Entertainment. And uh, I took a shot in the dark and was like, man, this might not be real, but it, you know, it says it is. So, so I, I just I was like, fuck it. I'm going to write, write Ron Howard an email. I'm going to ask him about this fucking movie, you know, Cotton Candy. So I, I, I wrote this quick little email, just took a shot in the dark. I was like, you know, hi, I don't, uh, I don't know if this is actual. Uh, I'm trying to reach Ron Howard if this is actual email or not, but I'll, I'm taking a shot here. Uh, I was just interest, uh, interested to know if... Um, you know, if, if you have any information on where I can find a copy of your film, Cotton Candy, uh, you know, can't find it anywhere, this, that, and the other, any help or information would be, uh, you know, would be appreciated. Thanks. Real short and sweet. And a day or two later, I shit you not, I got a fucking reply. And I thought, you know, surely it was going to be from a lackey or, a, a, you know, a secretary or something. It was from fucking Ron Howard himself. Shit you not. It was short and sweet. It was real short. Even more short and sweet than mine. Uh, <laughs> it just cracked me up. Because it gave me all the answers I needed in a very short, succinct way. And it just said this. It said, hi, Josh. Thanks for your interest in my film, Cotton Candy. Unfortunately, that film is deep. And then he said deep. He put, he put bold italics to the word deep. Unfortunately, that film is deep. Deep, big ball letters deep in the vault, and it will never, I repeat, never see the light of day again. Thanks, Ron Howard. That was it. That was, I got a fucking personal reply from, and his reply was very, very, uh, you know, set in stone, like. It's never going to, and I, so that made me want it even worse after that, you know, because I was like, Jesus Christ, how fucking bad is this thing? I got to see it now. Fuck. If Ron won't even let it out of the fucking vaults, man. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those like so bad it's good type things anyway. Hilarious. Hilarious. But there's been a lot, yeah, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies, a lot of stuff like that filmed here. Uh, not even counting all the, you know, not to mention all the fucking JFK stuff and everything that was here. I heard all kinds of stories about it. It was about a year or so ago, a year and a half or so ago. Um, oh, what's that dude's name? He's, what's that guy's name? Kind of queer, if you ask me. I don't know what his name is. What's that guy's name? He's an actor. He was in that... Eleven twenty two sixty three. He's always in. Yeah, you know, I can't remember the guy. He's always you know Pineapple Express and James uh, James whatever his name is. Anyway, he was fucking partying here in town with the locals and shit. Well, he was here filming that. Did you guys see that? Eleven twenty two sixty three. The uh, TV series. That 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 was pretty interesting. Very very different from. Uh, the actual Stephen King version, of course, you know, they always change stuff. But, um, I think that that film kind of walks in line with some of the stuff that I've been talking about or recently talked on some of the past couple of shows. By the way, no video for this show. This is audio only. I'm not feeling very up to being in front of the camera right now. Um, but I think that the, the, the subject, not to, I don't want to give away any spoilers for it if you haven't seen it. So, um, but just watch it if you haven't seen it. I think that definitely ties in with some of the stuff I've been talking about recently, you know, having to do with these uh, different things that have happened over the past year and some of the stuff that's been sort of been encoded and encrypted in movies and TV shows and all these happenings. So, definitely want to check that out if you get a chance. Did I have anything else to mention before I get into some news here? I don't think I did. Ancient Stonehenge-like calendar aligns with winter solstice. A Neolithic rock with a precisely carved hole was found in Sicily. Italian archaeologists have found an intriguing Stonehenge-like calendar rock in Sicily featuring a 3.2 diameter hole 
The rock formation marked the beginning of winter some 5,000 years ago. Now, why this is interesting is because, again, this is proof of, of what I've talked about, what I cover in my Lost Secrets of Ancient America films, and that is just that these, you know, this is not, these aren't groups of people or, you know, who had this knowledge. You see these rock carvings and these monuments and, and these things scattered all across the globe that are the the remnant of these, you know, these pre-Diluvian, pre-flood giants, Amorites, whatever you want to call them, that were going all, that were world travelers going all over the world right after the floodwaters receded from the last great deluge and you started to have civilizations rise up again. And these giants, you know, they still had knowledge from the previous age, from the previous highly technologically advanced civilizations they came from, but everything was wiped out. But they still had some knowledge. So this is why they were revered as gods by some tribal leaders as others, such as the Native Americans, because they were literally going around and, you know, mating with the, the females that they would find, setting up Kali civilization, setting up cultures, entire cultures. Celts, Vikings, Nords, I mean, all the same thing. There were all these world travelers, and of course we see time and time again the same ancient rock stone, uh, formations and whatnot and, and, and uh, megaliths that were built right in that same kind of time range. And, uh, you know, again, seeing these, it, it's not strange that we found these other places, but for them to find one they've never found before in Italy and Sicily with the same kind of iconography, that, yeah, that's fascinating. Here's another, um, you know, another hint, another, another clue if you will, of the elite aristocratic obsession with the ancient sites, and let's just call them what they are. These are Anunnaki sites in the ancient Middle East, uh, many of which are now being destroyed by Islamic State. Of course, we know why that is, because the Islamic State is nothing but a, an extension of the Israeli Mossad, the British Intelligence MI6, and the United States CIA, Create just like Al Qaeda, just like these other groups, and um, they appear to us and to the general public. They put out the perception that they're just this, you know, crazed Islamic group, and really what they're doing is they're there intentionally to destroy these ancient sites to hide this. Now, see, a hundred years ago. Because of technological developments, we we in the more that our technology progresses, the more that we have a reference point for the writings of the, you know the ancient Sumerian writings or or the ancient artifacts, any of the, or Egyptian stuff, any of this, the elite have known this for quite some time, and they you know as that's why they've kept us in such a state of arrested development technology wise. Now technology is 20, 30, 40, 50 years in some cases, ahead of what the general public ever knows about, folks. And that's a fact. That's a fact. So, the elite have known for quite some time that this day was coming. Because if if you go back to even like the 1950s, you know, you could go back then. And you started reading stuff, um, you wouldn't, you know, if before genetic, before we cracked the human genome, and genetics and, and genetic manipulation and all this stuff was a reality to us, a, a, an ability to us. There was a reference point for that. Um, Stargates, that kind of thing. Now we have a whole new reference point for all this stuff. So that puts humankind in the position now to be able to decipher, decode, and better understand what is depicted in these ancient writings and ancient artworks and and uh, ancient ruins and everything else. Anyway, this is a great example of how long the elite have been doing in this. Agatha Christie had little-known role in ancient Nimrud. Mystery writer joined second husband on his digs at ancient Assyrian city in the 1950s that was recently destroyed by Islamic State. Her diligence and face cream cleaned Nimrud's famous ivory. She captured the archaeological dig on celluloid and Kodak film developing the prints in water painstakingly filtered from the nearby Tigris River. And every day after she balanced the books and arranged for the next day's meals, Agatha Christie sat down to write. 
The British mystery writer's second husband, Max Mallon, was an archaeologist respected in his field, but with nowhere near the renown of his older wife. But Christie set aside her career for months each year to accompany Mallon in the field. Mallon built his career on digs in the 1950s in Nimrud, the remains of the ancient Assyrian city that survived 3,000 years, only to be blown into rubble by Islamic State group conquerors last year. And Christie, then in her 60s, was there to document his work in photo and film. And these, yeah, these stunning depictions, wing depictions of Anunnaki's and stuff like that. It's just wild. But uh, again, you can see the, you know, of course, Agatha Christie was a you know, British aristocrat, British aristocrat, and who knows, probably in the, you know, probably in the bloodline, stuff like that. Oh, here they are trying to sell us again on on uh, trying to convince us yet again. I, I love this, you know. If, if if we really did go to the moon, why do they constantly, to this day, still spend so much time trying to convince us that we did? Because what do you do with a crazy person or a person that's just rah, 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 talking, you know? Talking crazy, you know, some, oh, I'm a tree man, I'm a tree, I'm a tree man expert, you know, some, <laughs> some crazy motherfucker. You just ignore him, right? I, I love how the world of science is constantly, they try to think up new ways, they're just constantly trying to think of new ways to convince the public that we actually did go to the moon. And, um, you know, I can remember 10 years or so ago, first hearing about <coughs> The company that made the, the actual spacesuits were told told the public uh, by inquiry that the spacesuits had no radiation protection in them whatsoever, zero. So the possibility of sending men through the Van Allen radiation belts and back and forth and have them come back and survive is absolutely ridiculous, because. Everybody who knows anything about the Van Allen radiation belts knows that it's this massive belt of radiation, um, higher than anything that we experience down on the Earth level. And anything going through that in or out is going to die unless you have some kind of protection. Of course, supposedly we don't have the technology that has that kind of protection now. So now they're trying to spin this. How NASA got Apollo astronauts through the dangerous Van Allen radiation belts. Not all radioactivity is equal. So now they're spinning it saying, fortunately it was a problem, blah, 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 blah. They skirted the most dangerous parts of the belt and got through it as quickly as humanly possible. Now, wait a second. Have you ever seen the thing that they said they went to the moon in? I mean, it's a joke. One of the landers has fucking tinfoil with a, I'm not kidding you, with a road cone with PVC pipe coming out of it with tape around it. I'm not kidding you. That's how much of a joke it is. They didn't go to the fucking moon. And you think you could go to the moon and something that wasn't even sealed in, air pressure was just had like tinfoil around the outside of it for heat protection with some fucking PVC pipe around a, and tape around a fucking road cone? So now they're telling us, now the story is, well, they just steered, they steered through the, the dangerous parts. Have you ever seen that capsule? It shot off on a rocket and then had a little, <laughs> this wasn't a, a, a space cruiser. This wasn't the fucking Millennium Falcon or, or fucking Luke Skywalker's X-Wing or something. You know what I'm saying? You're not carefully maneuvering around. And not only that, they wouldn't have had computers and onboard sensors back then to even tell them in real time what parts of the Van Allen radiation belts were the most dangerous and which ones weren't. But their story here that they're spinning in this new bullshit narrative is that they skirted the most dangerous parts. I mean, it took you guys long enough to, to even... It took, I mean, it's taken them years to even come up with a plausible denial story of how we got through it. And now their story is, well, they just maneuvered through the bad parts. <laughs> Only a fucking moron would buy these idiots' narratives, okay? Tattoo that on your fucking chest. Only an idiot would buy these fuckers' narratives. I'm telling you. 
a bunch of mass. I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. Lots of mass UFO sightings um, happening lately. Most most of these sightings that are occurring, a lot of these sightings that are occurring now are actually chemtrail sprayers. Um, I've seen and my friends have seen. I've been out with people. I mean, we've I, over the past. I started uh, documenting chemtrails back in two thousand four. I started making a log and a journal. And uh, it's interesting to look back over that over the expanse of time and, and, and see what I recorded and, and stuff. And what I recorded over, you know, 13-year period or whatever is that a lot of spraying goes on around holidays, on or before holidays, especially around Easter. Almost every year on Easter weekend, there will be a forecast for no rain, and then the sky will be, I don't know why it is just around the Easter. Maybe it's a, you know... I don't know, maybe it's a ritual thing that ties into the pagan stuff or, you know, fertility rituals and who knows. But, uh, so that's one thing I've noticed, a a lot of chemtrail activity around the holidays. And um, stuff where I've shot a lot of video of chemtrail planes. And it's like you can see the plane with the naked eye and then you pull the video up and you zoom in on the video, and there's no plane there. There's a trail, but the plane is just not there. Um, a lot of this stuff, I think, is holograms. Absolutely, a lot of these are holograms. There is a theory. I don't remember where I first heard about this at. But there is a theory that these chemtrail planes are not actually ours at all, and that's why nobody's taking responsibility for it and why so many of these planes are unmarked and unregistered and undocumented flights. Um, I heard a theory once it, that there, the chemtrails are being done by um, essentially time travelers who've traveled back in time to uh, preemptively repair the atmosphere because in the future, of whatever time they've finally figured out time travel, uh, the Earth's atmosphere, because of what we've done during this time, has been decimated. And, you know, it's just a theory. There's no way to prove it. But, um, you know, out of all the theories I've heard and seen, man, it makes the most sense when I look at how many times, I I, I mean, I've seen stuff that's just unexplainable with the chemtrail phenomenon. But what's happening now is that people who are either ignorant of chemtrails, never heard of it, don't know what it is or anything else, are simply looking at the UFO instead of looking at the fact this UFO was spraying stuff. They had the most recent stuff that came out from Chile of the declassified nine-minute video of the UFO film from a Navy helicopter in 2014. Uh, they even say, well, this thing's, there's like a control or something coming from behind. I mean, I've seen everything. I saw this thing one time. It looked like a, a guppy. It looked like a flying guppy. It was spraying. It, it, I'm not kidding. It was like clear. It looked like a flying guppy. Um, it was spraying a chemtrail. A buddy of mine saw something. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fucking kidding. I've talked about this on the show before. I've mentioned this before, but it's fucking hilarious. It cracks me up every time. Because <laughs> he fucking called me. He was freaking out, you know. Uh, I told him about the chemtrail thing, and he never really paid attention to it. And he started paying attention to it, noticing it. And my friend saw this thing flying over over Dallas one day, and he said, dude, you're going to fucking think I'm out of my mind. He's like, I saw. I finally started looking and noticed the, the chemtrail spraying thing, and I saw this fucking thing today spraying chemtrails. And, and I don't know what this thing was. It was not a plane. Is all I can describe it as was is, is a flying nutsack. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, dude, I'm not shitting you. This thing looked like a flying nutsack. It was a flying fucking nutsack with a fucking chemtrail sprayer coming out the fucking behind it. I saw another friend who I heard another friend who saw some kind of like weird ice cube looking thing, a flying ice cubes with fucking <laughs> trails coming out of it. I've seen shit that I can't explain. Uh, you know, cloaked stuff. Anyway, um, look, a lot of these this stuff that people are just writing off as merely ET extraterrestrials are actually these chemtrail spray planes. And now, whether or not these are you know futuristic time travelers or, or extraterrestrials or whatnot, or whether it's just governments doing it in secret, who knows? But it is. I do find it interesting that they keep constantly talking about. Um, geoengineering the climate, spraying particles into the climate, to geoengineer the climate, and say we might do that one day, when you can look at the documentation from groups like the Department of Energy, the Department of Energy admits to doing chemtrail spraying decades ago. They've been doing it for years. 
But um, again, people all that another one was saying, well, why would they do if they're really just protecting their environment and this, that, and the other, and it's just for weather modification? Why wouldn't they just tell us? Why would they keep it a secret? Well, um, because number one, the usual answer is this is what you have to look at 100% of the time. They always, everything is always about keeping the power structure in place and keeping the machine, the mechanisms of society running indefinitely. And they're afraid of mass panics, just like they don't tell people about UFOs, who really killed Kennedy, any of this stuff. They're afraid of revolts. They're afraid of violent overthrows. They're afraid of government destabilization. They're, they're afraid of societal breakdown. So all the lies and everything, that, and, you know, from the rock wall to any of this stuff boils down to that. It simply boils down to that. Anything that they believe could cause a threat to their power supremacy is what they're going to keep a secret. Bottom line. So if people, you know, if you start telling people that we're, you know, we're spraying particles, aluminum, barium, and, and all the rest of this stuff into the atmosphere in order to not only deflect sun away from the Earth, but to also redirect sunlight back down to the Earth. That's the double-edged sword of the, uh, of the chemtrail stuff. That's what the spray does. This, one, of, one of these recent UFO sightings, um, you can look this up. It happened over in England. It's, it, I think the title of the article was Musician Captures UFO, something like that. Look that up. Um, fiery UFO. That was how they described it. And when you look at the video and you watch it and you see what it is, you clearly see, again, another chemtrail spray. You can see the, and the reason it looks on fire is because you can see the shaft, the, the stuff pouring out the back, the aluminum, there, it's reflective material. And, and depending on the amount of electromagnetic energy that they apply to it, and this is why you'll notice when they're spraying chemtrails, notice especially around like high noon or around that time of day, Wherever the sun is, wherever the direction of the sun is, you'll notice that's where they're spraying the chemtrails at. And again, weather modification, uh, climate mitigation, all the rest of it. But, uh, you know, again, it can be used. I think it's the other reason they don't want to talk about it or want to tell people about it. It's because it has the ability to be used to not only cool the planet, if that's necessary, if that's needed, if that's the desired effect, but also has the ability to heat up the planet. By, again, reflecting the light from the sun the other way, reflecting it back down to Earth. So, a lot of this stuff has been um, really just capturing these chemtrail things going on. But why, you know, again, if, the, if it's just simply governments in, in, in secret, that's why that's never held water for me. There's, I, I've just, I've observed so much and seen so much crazy shit. The craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life, not kidding you, the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life has been out while looking at the sky, using cameras, using videos, getting pictures of, cam of planes and everything, looking at chemtrails. Really. I mean, I've seen silver orbs, three or four silver orbs flying around. I've seen one flying around the outside perimeter of a plane before, just going around the outside of it in a constant circle. I've seen these things dip in and out of clouds. You can see them all the time. It's crazy. Just look up. If you want to see, I mean, I have people all the time, I want to see a UFO. I've never seen a UFO. You want to see a UFO? You want to be guaranteed to see a UFO? Take your ass out to the desert. Go out to Arizona, Nevada, or uh, uh, New Mexico, off the beaten path, away from the city. Go out there at night. Just go drive out, you know, an hour out of town somewhere or something, you know. Drive out, pull off the side of the road somewhere secluded where it's dark, get out of the car, turn the lights off, go walk and look straight up and stand out there for about five or ten minutes, maybe not even that, and you're going to see some stuff. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I can't tell you how many times I've had people, I want to see a UFO, I've never seen a UFO. I had somebody say that to me once, I'm like, you want to see a UFO? Come outside with me right now, I'll show you a UFO. And they were like, <laughs> all right, yeah, whatever, sure. You can just make UFO appear. I'm like, dude, they're everywhere. You just got to look. And it wasn't even two minutes. It <laughs> and this was a good one, too. This thing came fucking streaking out. It was like it was crash or something. Like It looked like space junk or something. I don't know. It was fucking on. It was on fire, man. This thing came fucking just hauling ass out of the atmosphere. <laughs> 
needless to say, uh, uh, my friend at the time was was quite uh, quite shocked. Well, if you haven't seen Leah Romini's uh, Scientology show yet, you've got to see the new, the latest episode that premiered last night, episode eight, I believe it is. It's part two of the uh, Ask Me Anything special that she did. Uh, boy, you know, again, proof that these people, I mean, I didn't need any more. I've been seeing it for years from the rock wall stuff that I did and, you know, America on Earth to the Scientology show I was on in the UK. I mean, these people have been paying attention to my work, folks. Even even when, uh, you know, uh, Ancient Aliens first came on. I mean, I was why I was so pissed the first time Ancient Aliens first, first came on in the first episode I saw because I literally, folks, you understand that when I was talking about Anunnaki stuff, when I first started talking about it, there, was, there wasn't thousands of people and a bunch of people out there talking about it like now. It was not accepted. I got laughed off of networks and laughed off of radio hosting gigs for talking about that stuff. And then they, then I see this first episode, and they were just taking stuff verbatim that I had said on my show, word for word, like that Giorgio Sukalos apocalypse, fucking gay-ass, fucking alien nut hairspray, fucking hair cocksucker. I hate that fucking faggot. Fucking Jesuit-trained piece of shit from the Von Daniken in, tr- Jesuit trained institute. Von Daniken is a, Eric Von Daniken is a fucking Jesuit, folks. Bottom line. It's a fact. He even he admitted it. Well, uh, yes, I was trained by the Jesuits. I can't even imitate his stupid voice. But th- these guys were taking shit that I said on my radio show word for word. Word for word didn't even change it. I've seen that so happen so often. And, uh, you know, I, it, so I, again, I was talking about, people would ask me about the Leah Romini show, and of course I said it's a shit show. Um, it's the same old shit, you know, that we've seen out of it. You know, it's nothing, but all they focus on are these, you know, sob, crimey river stories about people getting separated from their families, and any, everything else is off the table. Well, in this episode last night, you can tell that they've heard me talking about this, they've heard me made that statement, and they made a direct effort in that episode last night, ladies and gentlemen, to try and make it appear that they are now uh, addressing these issues. The f- most fascinating thing about watching that series is, is not what they say, as it is most of the time, not what they say, what they don't say, and watching how Mike Rinder and Leah Ramini react to certain subjects that are brought up. For instance... Any time, twice I've noticed that any time someone brings up Xenu, just as a question, they get nervous um, and don't want to talk about it and move on to something else. And I noticed the first time, and I was like, yeah, maybe it's just, you know, maybe they just didn't want to talk about it at that moment. And then in that episode last night, somebody brought it up again, and they did the same thing again. Quickly moved past it. I think it was either Mike Rinder or Leah Romini who made the, it might have been Mike Rinder who made the comment that, um, we don't need to concern ourselves with what they believe. We need to concern ourselves with what they do, what they've done. Bullshit. Bull, bull, I'm telling you, those motherfuckers are not X anything. This whole thing is a carefully... If you, you, I mean, listen to how, what they describe in this episode of, of what the church has done, what they do to people, and how meticulous they are about the things. They are a crafty, crafty organization that uses all the tricks that the intelligence agency uses to a T because they're, they're, they're one in the same with the intelligence community and the intelligence organizations. And somebody brought up the Xenu thing again. They got real, you know, didn't want to talk about it, move, move past to the next thing. Uh, in this episode, they mention, um, briefly mention some stuff about mind control. They bring a guy on. Think about this. Of all the cults that you could bring on to have somebody talk about. They bring on some guy from that was a that was a Mooney. Now, if you've seen my film, The Seer Right Volume One, I cover the Moonies. The Moonies are another CIA cult that is also coincidentally not linked, of course, to the Council for National Policy, just like Scientology is. You, are we supposed to believe that's that's just a coincidence? So, of course, they bring this guy on that was in the Moonies. And how did they just conveniently find him? Again, of course, 
because all of these people in these, all of these cults, the, the Moonies, uh, all of this, almost all of these cults, when you really trace them back, have all been the result of these CIA operations and stuff where these leaders form these cults, they get people to follow them, and then the leaders either disappear, have their deaths faked, and then it's the followers and the people who have adopted these cults who become the victims. So I, I, I just was blown away watching the episode last night because it's very clear if you've seen my film. They even took, let me put it to you like this. They even brought up the Louis Farrakhan thing. They even brought up the Louis Farrakhan um, thing that I have in the film. And they even took one of my L. Ron Hubbard pictures that I know for a fact they took, I could just tell because there's a way, there's a way they zoom, it, it's, um, it's like the um, uh, Ken Burns style, I, I love using that, it's like the Ken Burns style like photo zoom thing, it makes the picture move. Um, and you, I, it, it was just, I, I, I use a certain timing, I use a certain thing when I do that, when I edit. And um, there's a scene where they show, it's an early picture of L. Ron Hubbard where he's like laying hands or something, working with the E-meter in front of people. And the guys talk about how there's nothing but white people there or something. Anyway, there's one of the clips in there where they took that directly from Spellcasters. If you watch it, that episode last night, it's clear that uh, they are quite aware of my work, but of course they're not going to touch it with a 50-foot pole and bring up any of the real hardcore information because that's not what they're there to do. Because they want to keep Scientology, this is not about bringing Scientology down and ending it and making it where it's not around anymore. They just want to replace the people running it with new people, slap a new face on it, and uh, and say, okay, well, we fixed it. You know, we got all the bad folks out. See, because th- that's the thing you see Lee Ramini and Mike Rinder both doing. They both, like, say, not all bad things about Scientology. They all they they just stress the fact that it's the people in it that have been running it, and they never get to the solution of it, which is, you know, what their belief is, why they want people to have that belief, and where it comes from, and where the origins of it, and how it traces back to the MK Ultra program, mind control, black magic, and the rest of this stuff. So, but so instead. They create this TV show, make people ha- have the perception and the belief that they're exposing something, and that somehow this is a campaign to fight evil Scientologists. But in reality, they're not telling people why they should be concerned with the group in the first place. And that is the number one indicator that I'm absolutely correct that what they are trying to do is create a change of power in Scientology and create this perception that, okay, we got the old guard out, all the bad stuff is gone and done and over with. Now here's the new Scientology. Now we're we're the the good the riffraff is gone, and now we're here to do our work and clear the world, which is what they want to do, just like I predicted. Which they actually say in one of those episodes that that's Miscavige's goal is to clear the world, which is exactly what I postulated in the Spellcasters. If you actually pwned up the money to see it yet, um, that that's what I presented there is that I believe. And again, Trump's all connected to this, folks. You watch my film and you'll see. <laughs> but that's one of the things I postulate in the film is that is that they want to unleash this on the whole world. They want to use technology, and and, and I was just I just kind of had surmised that from my research. I didn't know when I made the film that David Miscavige himself actually admitted that and has said that and made that claim on multiple occasions. That blew me away. <coughs> so fascinating stuff god i'm feeling good i got no t- uh, it had i don't have any teeth pain yet i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep going for as long as i can here folks give you as much as i can police hunt for 
George Michael's mystery visitor seen outside his home before Star's death. Oh, man. Yet again, another one of these, just as I predicted, another one of these um, suspicious celebrity deaths. Uh, same thing with Amy Winehouse. Exact same thing happened with Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse had uh, was seen with a mystery man. She had a very close-knit, tight-knit circle of people, especially towards the end that she was around. And every, you know her handlers and everybody, and manager and everybody around knew all the people in her inner circle. But in the last 24 hours of her life, she was seen with a mystery man who, to this day, has never been identified. To this day, no one knows who he is or who he was. And then 24 hours later, she died. Um, you know, this it's very easy to do, man. This is why they like people who have a history of, uh, you know, using drugs and stuff like that. It's very easy to make this stuff look like drug overdoses. Most of the time, it's about... Um, I, I, look, folks. <laughs> it, it, it's not hard for these people to wave some cash around and make one of the, something like this happen. And when you've got these big record labels that are tied in with, you know, some of the most evil people on the planet, and you look at who controls these back catalogs of these artists, I mean, l let's be real here. Uh, George Michael hasn't had a fucking radio hit or anything close to, <coughs> you know, a song on the radio in 25 fucking years. So, but he's got a back catalog of music and a back catalog, uh, just like Bowie, that can be revived, remastered, re-released, re-kicked back into gear, and then, you know, put back uh, and start selling again on a public who is now mourning his death. And, and that's, you know, it's not always about that, but a lot of this stuff is about this. Uh, but then there's also the... The faking of the death thing. You know, when I when I first got into the Bowie stuff last year, I made my films. I did, I, I had seen some indications and seen some things that that sort of um, may have indicated that he may have faked his death. But you know, I really wasn't convinced. Now, after a year or so, of stuff has gone by and some of the stuff has happened. Uh, I am more not st still one hundred percent, but I am still I am somewhat convinced now more than I was a year ago that. Uh, that David Bowie faked his death. I think Elvis faked his death, too, of course. Uh, I think it's way more common than um, even people who are open to the idea of this stuff even think. I really do. I really think it's way more widespread and common. I think there's probably, I think if we really knew how many people have faked their deaths over the years, famous people, I think we'd be shocked by it. Um, there's this movie, you, you may have seen it, may not have seen it. It might be on Netflix. It was on Netflix for a while. It came out back in the 90s. I went to go see it at a theater with a with a girlfriend back in the nineties. You know, came out. I was real young when this came out. I was only twenty twenty one or something. You know, so I'll be honest with you. Even though I was a Bowie fan back then, I really wasn't as into this movie when it first came out. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it, it, it was a little too gay for my taste. Not that I have anything against gay people or you know or anything. Gay people are great, uh, but you know. I can handle, I can handle a little bit of gay. You know, a little bit of gay doesn't bother. You know what I mean? Like you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show gay. You know, like a little you know trans trans uh, sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. I I can handle that. When you when you go hairspray gay though, that, that's a bridge too far for me. I can't go. I can't go the John Waters hairspray. It's just that that's too far gay for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just a bridge too far. I can handle a little bit of gay. You know, a little bit, little bit is okay. Uh, but when you go that far, yeah, that's a that that's a little bit far. <laughs> but this movie uh, came out in the '90s. It was called uh, Velvet Goldmine, and I'd forgotten about it until recently. And I went back and watched it, and it blew my mind. One of the things in the film, I guess, it turned me off. I guess I just wasn't prepared to see Ewan McGregor's full frontal cock and balls in it. I think that was what turned me off initially when I saw it. And, you know, dude's making out. So, like, which, you know, whatever. I don't care. Now, I watch it now. It's still super gay, but I could tolerate it more now than I did, I think, back in the 
when I was younger. You know, as you know how it is. When you're younger, you're not very, uh, at least I wasn't. You know, you're, oh, fag, that's good. What was it on South Park? Did you ever see that South Park? The one where uh, Carmen tells himself he'll never be starts crying. He's all upset. And they're like, what's wrong, Carmen? What's wrong? And he's like, uh, I, I wonder. I, I just, I want to race NASCAR and I, I never will. And they're like, well, well, why? You can, you know, you can do anything you set your mind to. No, I'll never be poor or dumb enough to, to be <laughs> to ride NASCAR. Uh, anyway, he's, he starts, he starts getting, he gets somehow he gets in the race and he's racing NASCAR and he's just, everything that comes out of Cartman's mouth is, that's dumb, that's dumb as hell, that's gay as hell. You see that? That was gay, gay as hell. <laughs> it's hilarious. But uh, anyway, Go watch, even though it's gay as hell, You, I warned you. Yes, it's towards the hairspray end of gay. Uh, not, uh, past the the Rocky Horror end of gay and more into the hairspray end of gay. But, uh, dude, I just didn't realize it. You know, I, my mind wasn't in that in that area at the time when I watched it. I went back and, and watched that movie and went, boom, there it is. That movie is a fictionalized story of sort of the the rise of the glam rockers of the 70s and tells a a fictionalized story, supposedly fictionalized story, of uh, David Bowie and Iggy Pop. And uh, I don't know if you saw, I talked about that video, that last video that David Bowie put out with the TVs and all that stuff. And I said, you know, th this like to me is indicating because on one hand he talks about it's, he's like indicating like where his cause it's all about New York and he was cremated in New York supposedly. And he's talking about like second street. And so it appears that like he's giving a location of where his ashes were spread. But then other things of the song, you know, show this rocket taking off and uh, allude to maybe he, you know, he's left and gone to another planet. And that's what I talked about, you know, because for years I, I said, hey, David Bowie's a fucking alien for years. You know, half joking, of course, but you know, that guy looked like a fucking alien. When you looked in the dude's eyes, he looked like a fucking alien. And of course, he played an alien in the movie. And in that, uh, some, one of our listeners pointed out to me, I, I didn't catch this, but in that video with TV screens and then the electronic store, the name of the electronic store is Newton Electronics. And I, of course, it made the reference to, um, you know, gravity and, and, and maybe possibly there's going to be something that's going to be entering near Earth to affect Earth's gravity. And maybe that gravity is what could cause or the, the affecting of our gravity is what could cause cataclysms, you know. Someone pointed out that, the, that Newton was the name of David Boy's character that he played as the reptilian alien in The Man Who Fell to Earth. That, to me, was like, okay. <laughs> there it is. Fucking Bowie was a goddamn alien. He was a fucking alien. That's it. The dude really, really was a fucking alien. And then when I watched that Velvet Goldmine movie, I was blown away, because that's pretty much what they iterate to you were the origins of this David Bowie character in, he's not, they don't call him David Bowie, just like they don't call Iggy e. Pop that either. It's Kurt Vile and is the Iggy e. Pop guy, which is uh, Ewan McGregor, and then uh, the other guy, was it Jonathan Reese Davies, I think is his name, uh, was the Bowie guy, and they point blank in that movie say that he was basically an extraterrestrial, that he was an alien. It came to be a rock star. And then, um, you know, it goes on and it's all about him faking his death. I was just like, fucking A, man, yet again. They laid that shit out for us 20 fucking years ago in this little kind of obscure kind of indie film that uh, probably a lot of people got turned off by and really didn't catch a lot of stuff in because there's, you know, kind of the overly gay stuff in it, the hairspray gay stuff. So uh, it just never ends, does it? So wild. All right. Well, that's all I got, folks. I'm going to leave it there. It's starting to kick in again. Hey, y'all, uh, do what you can. Get get some rocks and get some gems, minerals, crystals, jewelry, whatever you can from us from Let There Be Rocks. Make a donation at our website. Use the donate button if you want to use credit card, debit card, or prepaid card. 
You can do that. And you can also use our banners there and support our films, projects, our operating costs a month, anything, folks. We are just running on absolute zero after me not being able to be productive this month because of my teeth issues. And uh, I'm just going to keep uh, mitigating the pain. Hopefully, we can get some money in here and get this stuff fixed soon, and uh, and we'll be back to the races. we got a lot of work to do, and uh, this is our 10th year of broadcasting. This is going to be a big year for us. and got a lot of stuff planned. And we can't do it without your help. So visit theglobalreality.com. Get yourself a subscription to the archives. Get yourself movie downloads. Just go support our work, folks. And we'll see you next time. My name is Josh Reeves. I love each and every one of you. Take care.